What we've seen lately is an increased consensus among actors beyond the traditional field of women's economic empowerment that social norms uh, affect women's financial inclusion in a big way and are responsible for some of the large persistent gender gaps in access to formal financial institutions that we see. Um, based on my work with the community of practice, we see four general mechanisms whereby social norms are affecting financial inclusion. The first is that social norms shape provider perspectives on women. Because they perceive women as homebound and economically inactive, women are not an attractive market to providers. The second is that norms shape demand women have for financial inclusion. So for example, if women are responsible for fetching water, they might be more likely to demand pay-go water systems uh, to facilitate their burdens. The third is that social norms impose constraints on women and affect the delivery channels whereby providers can uh, reach women. So for example, uh, childcare obligations um, I mean that women don't have as much time to go to bank branches and engage with uh, cumbersome procedures. Then again, we know that in many contexts it's not appropriate for women to engage with male banking agents, and so this is another constraint that needs to be taken into account. Finally, social norms affect bargaining power within the household. If you give a woman a loan or an account, how can you be sure that she's the one using that for her own ends and that it's not being co-opted for someone else's purposes? Uh, so these are the ways that social norms impact uh, financial inclusion and are responsible for the persistent gaps that we see. Um, and I don't know if that's something that, that you addressed, but um, uh, d did you explore avenues to work around those social norms to address those? So this is one of the reasons why we have a community of practice on women's financial inclusion, and we're very happy about Oxfam's tools for measuring household care and valuing uh, work done both in the formal and informal and sector and in the household. Um, because we are just now coming together um, as a community of, of practitioners and policymakers to find out what are the best ways to address these norms and to scale those changes. It's one thing to change a community, it's another to change uh, a society and a country at large.